hi everyone and welcome back so in this video we are going to talk about uh, the second topic of the second module and we are talking about nascs advance we have already covered uh, in the last video we covered how we can dockerize the nascs application so what i will do is i will create uh, the third application just by renaming the folders and just changing the the scope in the package json because we are not going to just create each and every application from the scratch it's all existing application we just copied it so it's all the nestjs uh, setup we already have and we are going to talk about uh, we are going to talk about the how we can handle the exceptions and how we can do the validations so this is the second topic so first topic dockerizing the nests application is done second topic is data validation how we can do the payload validations which is coming to the request let's say you are writing a different kind of uh, apis put post patch and you are passing the payloads even you are passing the query parameters so how you can do the validation of the data which you are passing the type string number email url valid types and valid formats those kind of validations we can perform and we can also validate by throwing the custom exceptions or the existing exceptions these are some of the standard exceptions uh, you can throw from your controller or your services that will be handled at the controller level and nestjs will convert that into appropriate status code not found unauthorized forbidden all these exceptions automatically gets converted into their respective status codes and you can also write your uh, exception filters what it does is it is just going to format or add additional properties like okay what is the method name what was the timestamp uh, you can also send some some code uh, like uh, status code timestamp path method message these are the properties we are returning so whenever there is an http exception thrown from controller or service that will be intercepted by this filter and you will have just additional properties uh while you hit the api and see the response okay this is how you can throw any custom exception like uh, existing ex exception from the controller through throw new not found exception throw new forbidden exception throw new uh, unprocessable entity exception throw new uh, forbidden or any kind of uh, standard exceptions you can throw these are built in http exceptions uh like you don't need to do response dot send dot status all those things now if you are throwing any exceptions that means nestjs will handle and convert that exception into a particular appropriate status code and we are already using this uh, filter exception filter that is doing its magic of uh, adding couple of more properties so let's play with the, these things so we are talking about the dto validations and this is how we are applying the validation pipe at the controller level so all the apis which you are writing in the controller will have this validation pipe added and with the help of this validation pipe we are doing the dto validations and what are the dto is dto are the request objects which you are passing either in the query parameter in the path parameter in the payload all these things and you just create a separate dtos for it so let's say we already have a simple user apis i want to address a nested uh, object in the user record is an address which will be the address uh, info dto so that is the custom type i am going to create in my dto class that will have just a state and city so with the help of that we can just check okay this particular payload like when you are creating a user are you passing the address and if you are passing then it should have a city and state let's say if you are passing address empty i will send you okay bad request if you are passing only city i will send you bad request if you are passing the whole object inside address okay i'm passing you the i'm i'm allowing you to create user because your payload is valid so these kind of things we can just create so i just created a address info dto custom class so we, because we need a custom type for it it's a nested object so we need and we can pass this custom type in our existing user create user body dto right so we can just use address info dto there here i will change okay we have a city and we have a state city is string state is string and here we can add uh, another property that is an address which will be uh, is object type of object first let's see how we apply the validations on an object then we can also talk about an array 
so this is public address and this is address in for dto this is going to be an object so we are using these class validator annotations is object is array array means size is string is defined is uuid is is not null all these are actually is url is email is string all these are uh, annotations or decorators provided by class validators on these uh, class properties so that these validations can be enforced by validation pipe so here we are doing custom validation so i'm using validate validate nested and validate type so if when you are passing the address in the user object which type should i validate against for this address so i'm just passing validate type address info dto and uh, yes so this is simple address info dto we are passing this is having city and state and now what i will do is i can just uh, so this is a dto right and this is how we can expose things on the swagger docs that okay this is the example this is how my payload should look like this will tell swagger okay just for the end user who is consuming it we'll see this payload and we'll understand okay address should be of object with city and state and it is required false because we are using is optional that means if you are having is optional means it can override everything that means you don't even pass this property but if you are passing it then you need to enforce and you need to follow these uh, constraint okay city and state must be there so i will just change the scope of this package json and then what we can do is we can use this nx console some i saw some comments that people are facing issues with nx console on the vs code don't worry about it you just have nx json or this individual repository also you can run you don't need um, the whole monorepo setup you can just have a particular folders from the apps because it is independent it has everything in it so otherwise you can just execute these commands pnpm exec nx run your uh, repository your application colon the target build npm run uh, i mean run dev something like this and this is the the typing errors in the entity build we forgot to import the address in for dto now we should be able to start our application i think we also need to start the the database that's uh, that we haven't started so we are doing build so this is a simple command you can also write manually pm but i'm lazy and uh, no one wants to write this long command they just want to have some clicks around it so everything works except the database so i will just check what is the database host port our docker compose file at the root here is our docker compose file so you can have it just to spin up your postgres container so that if your uh, nestjs application depends on the database then you need to have this container running so that your application can start so here we are doing docker compose up and uh, let's check the port and all so here i will check env it is port is 5432 check the docker compose override okay this is the mistake 5432 I will restart the docker expose map the host port with the container 5432 5432 and in the env we can use the same port to connect to the container postgres uh, app so now we are starting it and this has started now we can check our application so we can just check our application how it really looks now like because low is 33010 and we will just go to the swagger docs and we will just see this hello and i can see this address dto is populated here so let's say if i'm passing it okay it is missing authorization because that is required before you check the payload so i will pass the empty and here i will hit 400 bad request exception but still i didn't get the the exact message why what is the reason of 400 so this is coming because i have this exception filters let's comment it and try to see what error okay I, here i'm getting the proper message so i need to access error dot response dot message in the exception filter so that change we can we can enable it and then uh, we can go and our try to change our implementation for this filter exception filter inside core so here we are doing exception dot message so we can try to log this exception and try to see what is the the value we are getting and then we will try to see what is the exception object we are getting so inside exception dot response dot message we can get the property 
okay pass the token and here i can see the payload validation works address must be a string something wrong with our dto i mean we might have missed something let's see inside our user dto inside user domain okay line number 55 is the problem right i think let's scroll down because why it is complaining because line number okay yes this is the problem so now it is sorted now we can just create the users simple this is how we can simply create the user now you can convert this into an array also let's say we want to pass this user address as an array so here we can change these types we can just set it as an is array and we can also set is array mean size array mean size that means if you are passing address then you should be passing that as an array and the min length of this array should be greater than zero so array min size is one that is just another validation we have added is optional validate nested okay now here we also need to update the type in the entity because that is the error coming address info dto array so we'll go to the user entity and we'll update the types it should be now an array of address info dto and we'll try to create we'll just reload this because we are just passing an object it should be passed as an array let's see if i'm passing it okay internal server error because uh, okay yeah because it's sending me that user already exists so we can just change this email and test it it should work because address is nullable and you can pass just an empty address if you are, if you are passing it then it should have at least one length if i'm passing address empty it will send 400 pad request you can pass an array of address and everything should be fine it should be able to create a user with that just fix the payload json object now it is creating the address so these are like simple uh, payload validations you can perform on your d using your dto's class validators and validation pipe and apart from that you can also we can also play with the exception filters like what all custom exceptions you can throw and how the nestcs is dealing with these exception thrown from the controller so this is the the library class validatory we are using so nestjs is internally handling these dto payload validations when they are passed to the controllers but if you want to do it manually you write your class you uh, create the object of the class and do validate run validate method it's same as the joey and jord these are the two libraries for the payload validations or javascript object schema validation same thing we are doing with the class validator now uh, what we are going to do is we will try to see what else we can validate we can validate query parameter path parameter body i mean anything we can validate using these dto's because uh, we are using these custom classes at the rate video body at the rate uh, at the rate params at the rate uh, query all these annotations we can use and pass the custom classes okay so now let's say a simple example is how we can uh, how there is a http get i'm writing and i'm passing the query parameter email and i'm passing the couple of ids for which i want to fetch the users so it's just like a random example here i'm passing email and the ids are comma separated one two three four five six seven because i want to fetch the users for only those users i want to get for which i'm passing the ids so by default this api gives all the users but I want to get only the users for which the IDs I'm specifying in the URL. So how can we do the validation for this? First of all, validation is all these IDs should be of type string or number. Okay. I'm just considering them as a string and we should be able to transform these comma separated IDs into an array while sending the data to the controller. So we need to use a class validator transform or class transformer to transform this uh, query parameter so here i'm just going to write this uh, user query dto this is the class we can write inside dto that should have an email and the ids as two properties ids i'm expecting uh, i mean we need to use transform from the user I'm, I'm getting that id as a comma separated array comma separated string values 
and I wanted to transform that into an array of string. So here we are passing these IDs. Pass IDs comma separated. This is for end user who is consuming it. He will be passing the IDs as a comma separated. But I wanted to transform that into an array and send it to controller. So they can just use these IDs directly. Okay, so is optional. And here we can use transform. So these IDs or IDs are the string array. And is email we can remove. So we are transforming it values of type string. If you are passing value, then we can just use value. If type of value is string, then the, we can split that by comma separated. Otherwise, return the value itself if that is not passed as a string. That is a simple transformation we are doing uh, on top of the, the data we are getting. And this is saying expecting the callback. It is expecting the callback. So here we can simply pass each string each true. And uh, okay, there is some error. I used to do it like this. Maybe something has changed. I need to check the class transform or transform method what has been changed recently. It is saying that type is incompatible. So I think it is the the value we are passing is a values as a step single parameter now, but it has converted into as a callback. So this is the error assignable of parameter incompatible type. Okay, so this is the error. This is the breaking change here in the this is what we need to apply. We need to pass value as a destructured property value. Okay, we are passing it destructured and then we are splitting that by comma separated otherwise returning the value. Now we can play with this example. How it works so we can just hit our APIs. We can just try to pass this query in our uh, APIs and then at fat user at fetch user we will just try to log it what data we are getting we can just do simple console.log and try to see the data okay so let's go to our apis and see if what we are getting so this is how we are passing email i will pass the comma separated ids execute i will put the dummy header and then next This is how we are passing. Uh, this is how the NestJS is passing it. That's fine. It can be you can pass the manually by comma separated also. Here we are getting the values. I think it's coming undefined. IDs are coming undefined. So I think I know the reason. Maybe in the transformer, I did something wrong. So let's debug this. IDs are coming one two three because here I it should be value not val right. Obviously, value is undefined. So it should be value. Now I'm getting that. And I'm able to get all these uh, parameters. Now, next thing is how we are throwing the exceptions, right? There are many ways uh, you can throw the exceptions. You can simply, from your controller and services, you can throw these standard exceptions. Throw new, not found exception, throw new unauthorized exceptions and all. So here you can see from the controller, I'm throwing this exception, not found exception. And what will happen is when I'm hitting it, I will get the not found exception. Similarly, you can throw custom exceptions from here, throw new unauthorized exception, throw new forbidden exception, unauthorized exceptions, and processable entity exception 422, right? So it will automatically convert into the status code, unauthorized exception 401, forbidden exception 403 okay so that's all about uh, the this video now what we will do is in the next video we'll talk about more about uh, typo rm and the nest js